Good morning. Welcome to Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. Had a lot of selling in Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum as well. They look very similar and it's trying to rebound here. We'll see if it does. I sold some covered calls on it a little higher on uh, X, which we currently hold in our portfolio. So let us go to our word of the day. Our word of the day is the quotient and see if we can get our word to pop up here, becoming liquid or having a tendency to become liquid. When ice is removed from the freezer, it becomes deliquient. Uh, let us move over to our S&P 500 heat map. Tech is bouncing a little bit. Energy is soft. Utilities are soft. So Tesla and Amazon are the two big cap techs that are down the most. So that is where we are right there. Let us move over to our charts. Before we do that, I have our little advertisement of the day. If you're concerned about building up your wealth over a lifetime and don't want to turn a 401k into a 201k, well, just look no further than here. This beats index investing by about 5% per year. And it's protected growth as it only goes up when the market goes up, it does not come down when the market goes down. So a 2008 reprise um, would not be fun. So you spent a lifetime building up your wealth. You may not have a long enough time span to um, build it up again. So there you go. Let us move over to our charts. This is our IPO of the day. It is bouncing. It's like we're working on a bottoming base as it clears the 20 day moving average. And let us take a look at our stock of the day. Stock of the day is, has fallen. Looks like it's trying to fill the gap that it had earlier in the day. Still up a little over 1%. And let us go to look at our dollar index. Dollar index continues to fall down a quarter of a percent. Silver, silver looks pretty good here. Got a double bottom base here. It's holding steady at yesterday's high is up 0.18%. Take a look at gold. Gold is holding steady right there. Copper. Copper has cleared this base over here. We take a look at a couple of copper mining companies. Tech is pulling, pulling back here. Arrow copper working on a double base. Yes, you could draw the line over the tops right here. And that would have been an early buy point. Southern Copper is trying to get above this 50-day moving average. Freeport MacMoran is still below its 50-day moving average. So there we have that. Take a look at our uranium plays. Uranium. Sold off, bounce off of the 10 day moving average. And now let's look at Denison Mines, bouncing off of the 20 day moving average. Pull back pretty strong here. Earnings came in at a negative 246%, a 33% earnings uh, surprise on the negative. So let's take a look at our bond yields. Bond yields are bouncing. Hold this down, gap up, get above its declining 10 day moving average. The 10 year bond is now at 3.84%. The 20 year bouncing up 
3.8%, is that 3.03%? The VIX is falling. It's almost just under a percent. It's falling to 15.57. S&P 500 is pretty flat. We've got some tight areas right in here that um, possibly be a bullish move as um, nobody looks to be selling. It looks like they're buying any pullbacks. Here is the equal weight in the S&P 500, pretty flat um, for the day. The NASDAQ sold off initially and is bouncing off the 20 day moving average up 0.35%. Equal weight on the NASDAQ is up slightly. Let's see if it builds a handle here and then moves up. It's kind of a more of a V-shaped pattern, not the best pattern in the world, but uh, that is, can always get what you wish for. Small cap, gapping down today off 0.7% and the Dow Jones is pretty flat for the day. Now let's go to our news. China's total industrial profits rose 4.1% in July from a year earlier compared to 3.6% in the previous month. Now to our sector news breakdown, the National Football League Players Association sued DraftKings in New York Federal Court on Monday accusing the sports betting giant of refusing to pay what it owes for using NFL player likenesses on non-fungible tokens. And with that news, DraftKings is actually bouncing off of the 20-day moving average. ChargePoint Holdings said it has partnered with Damlier. Damlier buses to integrate its telematics and charge management system with Mercedes-Benz and Cetra brand buses. And uh, the stock is off actually 1%. Hershey was downgraded to sell from neutral at Citicorp, which said volume weaknesses, cocoa inflation presented looming downside risk. Leslie Pool Company announced the appointment of Jason McDowell as CEO effective September 9th replacing Michael Egek, who has departed the company and resigned from his board seat. Leslie backs full year 24 EPS and revenue outlook. They tried to move higher and they moved lower, down 6.53% onto energy industrials and materials. American Woodwork, Woodmark, quarter one adjusted EPS $1.89 below consensus of 240, so that's gonna dive, and it does dive, and tried to fight its way back, got above its key day moving average, as it's off 10.74%. Vista Corporation CEO, Dennis Vermillion, announced the company's board of directors that he will retire from the company in the first quarter of 2025. Vermillion is will transition his duties as CEO to a Vista president and COO, Heather Rosentrader. So Heather is going to be the next CEO, it appears. On to Heiko. So Vista is down on that news, down 1.82%. Heiko, quarter three, EPS 97 cents versus 92 Set estimate initially selling off, falling to the 50 day, and got a lot of buying ever since then, up 1.49% off to Lindy. Said it would invest more than $2 billion to build a clean hydrogen facility for supplying to Dow's pass to zero production complex in Alberta, Canada. And it continues up, it's up 0.5%. And let's take a look at Dow. Dow is down slightly, down 0.26% on to financials. Bank of Montreal, quarter three adjusted EPS, $2.64. Canadian versus estimate of $2.75. 
it sold off initially and it is fighting back to stay pretty flat for the day. A bank of Nova Scotia, another Canadian bank, quarter three adjusted EPS, dollar sixty-three uh, Canadian versus estimate of a dollar sixty-two, and it is moving on up, up two point five percent on a decline of five percent earnings year over year, uh, and their year over year quarter. Healthcare, Eli Lilly Company announced Zepound. Two and a half milligrams and five milligram single dose vials are available for self pay for patients with on label prescription, significantly expanding the supply of ZEP found in response to high demand. And that stock is up two and a half percent. That's some pretty good volume. Actually, it did not move on to Lily. Um, it is selling off here. Um, Pod Insulet Corporation announced its groundbreaking Omnipod 5 automated insulin delivery system it is now indicated for use by people with type 2 diabetes age 18 years and older. So it is moving on up 6.9%. A nice move for Insulet. And on to Merck. Announces phase three trial initiation of Bowman Gemstat, an investigational candidate for the treatment of certain patients with essential thrombocythemia. And on to Roche. Merck is down slightly on that news. Roche Holdings. Off slightly said the European Commission has approved PSGI following phase three study, which showed that PSGI achieved disease control for rare blood disorder known as perioxy, perioxy small nocturnal hemoglobinuria and was well tolerated when administered every four weeks via subcutaneous injection. On a high, difficult to pronounce words there, I'll tell you. ERIB, Trinity Biotech, PLC announced that it has received substantial additional orders for TrinScreen HIV as a result of its strong demand and successful scaling of production capacity. And it gaps up on that news, up 44, 45%. Big volume. So that is definitely moving that company. On to tech, media, and telecom. Apple said CFO Luca Maestri will transition from his role on January 1st, 2025. Will continue to lead corporate services teams, including information systems and technology information security and real estate and development. Reporting to Apple CEO Tim Cook as part of a Plan succession, Kevin Herrick, Apple's vice president of financial planning and analysis, will become chief financial officer and join the executive team. So Apple is bouncing a little bit on that, up 0.54%. Critio announced that CEO Megan Clarkin has informed the board of directors her intention to retire within the next 12 months. Clarkin will continue to serve as CEO under her successor until her successor is named, and which time she will also step down from the board. Clarkin has no has also agreed to remain with Pridio as a senior advisor role. So the stock, uh, surprisingly, has sold off on that news, off uh, 4.35%. Did bounce to stay above the 20-day moving average onto trip. Quarter two adjusted EPS a dollar versus 74 cents. And on to JD.com announces a $5 billion new share repurchase program. And it is gapping up on that news up 3.18%. Finally, Western Digital files for a mixed shelf size not disclosed. And they initially sold off and they are bouncing back. And we did not 
show up. This one, this is our ETF of the day. It is up two and a half percent right now. And I think Trump.com didn't hurt that at all. So that is a story there. Let us see what we're currently doing. We did add a lab this morning to our portfolio as it has definitely cleared um, and it looks like a bottoming base cleared the 20 day moving average. I'm just going to pull up our screen. We did get stopped out of at least one company this morning. BST hit our stops this morning. And I believe there was one and coherent. I'm going to continue to you like coherent, but it had a pretty big um, downdraft. So it did shake us out over here. You may go in with a option, see if we can manage it better that way. Um, of the other things in our portfolio, NVIDIA. NVIDIA initially sold off and bouncing. It's up 2% today. Earnings are tomorrow. App, App Lovin, initially sold off to the 10 day moving average and got some buying in there, bounced back up 0.79%. Before we go on any further, we're going to just take a look at some of the other things. We looked at Apple. Mr. Softy, Microsoft, sell it off to the 200 day moving average and bounces. See if it can get any buying support here. Google is pulling back as well. Meta bouncing off of the 20 day moving average. Trying to see if this is going to be a cup with a handle here. Pulls back, and possibly comes back like this. Uh, Netflix actually bounces. So this is a cup with a handle here. We had added some in the handle and now it is bouncing up 1.82% today. Amazon continue to pull back. Tesla had a pretty strong pullback today as well, off 1.42%. Uh, Eli Lilly tried to move higher and then is pulling back on that news. Now let's continue to see what uh, we continue to do here. Like Bo did pull back uh, yesterday after moving higher. This is a recent IPO in insurance and diversified provides casualty and professional liability products to over 7 billion in policyholders. Still have 3M. Um, we have a spread on 3M. We have a 128, 132 as it gets pretty close to the strike. We'll see if we'll be rolling it up to the Next level. And financials, Arch Capital Group. Kind of broke out of this pivot, continuing higher, performing well. FTAI. We have a spread on FTAI. We got the 120, 125. Continues to work its magic on that spread. This is a Mexican food uh, retail. It's gotten up to the profit zone here. So we'll take a look at this since we um, take some profits on this one. We bought it a little late. So we only got a 
4% profit here, but um, we'll continue to look at that. We'll keep you updated. We bought uh, some options right before earnings. Earnings are due today on Sentinel-1. We'll see if that pays off. Um, continue to hold OS. Had a little bit of a pullback today. Still in the pivot area here. We bought that um, somewhere in here. Powell Industries has a little bit of a pullback here. Continue to hold that one. And a company that has been on the move today on the downside has been Kava. Got word that some of the management had sold a number of shares. Still stayed above, um, as long as it stays above this gap right here. Um, still good to hold. It's fighting fighting back, it did pull back at 1.2, what was 1.6, actually as low as 113.90. So that's quite a big bounce from there. Continue to watch that one. And that has been Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. Um, I guess I've um, been reading a little bit that this didn't get the green little circle pattern recognition because it was only five weeks and pattern recognition doesn't come on until six weeks. But it still looked like a good pattern. And as we had detailed earlier, we did buy after after hours, I believe it was 108 and 109. So uh, that's where we added to our holdings. And um, that is our show for the day. Feel free to Send any comments our way. In the meantime, hope everybody has a great Taco Tuesday. Go out there and make a difference. We'll catch you tomorrow on Mornings with Michael Wednesday.